Hello guys and welcome to another video. So you just watched season one of Percy Jackson and the Olympians and you loved it and now you want to read the books? Either that or you read the series a long time ago, watch the show now and want to get back on the horse and read every single book that Rick Riordan has ever written in the Percy Jackson universe. And you're frightened because Wikipedia tells you this, but other people tell you this, and there's so many books, you don't know where to start, you don't know which ones you have to read, you don't know how to avoid spoilers, you don't know, you just don't know. So that's why I'm here. And today I'm not just giving you one, not just giving you two, I'm giving you three different ways that you can read the Percy Jackson books. But don't worry, we're starting with the dummy version. Strap in, get yourself a warm beverage, a snack, cause you're in for a long one. But don't worry, once we're through, you will know exactly what reading order best works for you. And in case you're still confused by the end, I did create a special PDF just for you. So watch this, read the PDF, and dive into the world of Half-Bloods. Look, there's over 30 books in this book series, and maybe you just watched the show and just wanted to enjoy one through five books because it was an entertaining season. And I understand 30 books, even 10 books, is a big commitment. So this is what you have to do. For the dummy order, you probably just want to read the first five Percy Jackson books. This series is called Percy Jackson and the Olympians and it has five books. We start with Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. This is the first movie that we get, the musical that we have, and also the first season that we've gotten on Disney+. Plus. After that, we have book two, which is Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters. This was also adapted into the big screen. There's a terrible movie following the events of this book, loosely following the events. That's the only adaptation we've gotten so far. Here is hoping that we get a season two renewal announcement soon, because I'm dying. This is the second book, followed closely by the third book in the series that you want to read, Percy Jackson and the Titan's Curse, which is followed by book number four, Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth, followed by the fifth book in the series, and technically the final book in the series, Percy Jackson and the Last Olympian. Now this was released in 2010, and when this was released, and for many years afterwards, this was the official ending of this book series. I say was, because Rick has written and published another book that's technically number six to this, but for that you technically have have to read another series, but not really. It's complicated. Even the dummy version is complicated. So after this, we have the book Percy Jackson's and the Olympians number six, Percy Jackson and the Talus of the Gods. If you just want to read purely Percy Jackson, Annabeth Chase, and Grover Underwood, then this is the book that you read after this. This is Percy Jackson and the Olympians number six, and it takes place in Percy's senior year. Now we're going to get two more of these. The next one is coming out this September, and it's called The Wrath of the Triple Goddess. Technically book number seven, but also number two in this trilogy. And we haven't gotten an announcement for book three, but I'm sure that in September we'll get an announcement for it coming out September 2025. However, as I said, even though those books take place after Percy Jackson and the Olympians, they technically also take place after the events of Heroes of Olympus. So in case you want to understand how Percy and Annabeth have gotten to that place without spoiling yourself for Heroes of Olympus, then you should read Heroes of Olympus, the next big series. Percy Jackson can be divided into three big series of five books each. The first one, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, which I just showed you before, and the second one, Heroes of Olympus, which is composed of the the Lost Hero, which follows three new characters and still is in the Greek world. So we still see Camp Half Blood, we still see Greek gods, but we don't have Percy. We have Annabeth in this one and Percy in the next one, book two called The Son of Poseidon. So it could it could only be Percy. Book one, Lost Hero, no Percy, a little bit of Annabeth and Rachel Elizabeth there. In this one, we do get Percy being in one of the narrators because the big difference from this to the Percy Jackson series is that Percy was just one POV, just one point of view, just him in first person being himself, which is, you know, all that anyone can ask for. In this series, however, the Heroes of Olympus is told from seven different points of views. Our seven heroes, the seven heroes from the prophecy. So here we have Piper, Leo, and Jason. Here we have Percy, Hazel, and Frank. And in book three, The Mark of Athena, we finally have Annabeth plus all our previous heroes. So Annabeth and Percy are people who get points of view chapters in the Heroes of Olympus series, but it just depends on the book. Each book has a different combination of chapters. So if you do want to know about Percy, just know that Percy and Annabeth are very important main characters in these as well. These are the first three books followed by book four, 
also known as the House of Hades, and don't look at the cover too closely, and book five, Blood of Olympus. Now, if you just want to read Percy Jackson, the character, based books, I suggest that you read from The Lightning Thief all the way to The Blood of Olympus, and after Blood of Olympus, you pick up Chalice of the Gods. That's the basic chronological order of events. If you want, you can stop there. But if you want to read the third main series, you would have to pick up Trials of Apollo. That's right, Trials of Apollo is the third main five book series. So far we have, you can read the first five books of Percy Jackson and the Olympians by themselves as like a five series standalone. Perfectly, that's what I did. If you just want to read those, perfect. If you want more Percy after that, you can read either Chalice of the Gods or read the five books in Heroes of Olympus and then read Chalice of the Gods and Wrath of the Triple Goddess coming out this year. But if you want a little bit more, you can do that, just what I just explained in that same order, and after you're done with that, you can pick up the first book in The Trials of Apollo. Before I tell you the next book to read in this reading order, make sure to stay tuned till the end of the video where we have a special Illuminate unboxing and a special discount code off for your next purchase. Let's get back to the reading order. So here is the first book in The Trials of Apollo. It's The Hidden Oracle. Basically, this story follows the events that happen right after Blood of Olympus, the last book in the Heroes of Olympus series. It's Apollo and how he angered Zeus, and the consequences is that Zeus turns Apollo from a god into a mortal, crash landing in a dumpster in New York City. Apollo does seek help from Percy, who takes him along a new young demigod all the way to camp, and the main story happens at Camp Half-Blood. So this is still part of the main big series. It follows the Greek gods, and it follows characters from Camp Half-Blood. It also has several cameos of both Percy, Annabeth, and the different heroes from Heroes of Olympus. So if after Heroes of Olympus you want to see where they're at and what they're doing with their lives, I suggest picking this up. Also a very enjoyable series with one of the best character arcs that you're going to see in literature. So the first one of course is this one, followed by book number two, The Dark Prophecy, then book three, The Burning Maze, and you're going to want to read this one without looking up things about the Heroes of Olympus characters because you will be spoiled. If you like Heroes of Olympus, I assure you, you're going to want to know the canon from this book because oh man. Then after that we have book four in the series, Tyrants 2, followed closely by the fifth book in the series and the last book in the series overall, Tower of Nero. And yes, I do have it signed, thank you very much. So these are the five books in the Trials of Apollo series and basically the last big series in the Percy Jackson Chronicles. Remember, we started out with Percy Jackson and the Olympians, then Heroes of Olympus in the middle and finished with Trials of Apollo. Those are the big three series where we have Percy popping up regularly. He's the main character in the first one, he is one of the protagonists in Heroes of Olympus, and he is a glorified cameo in Trials of Apollo, so he kind of loses importance as the story goes on. He is the main character in Chalice of the Gods, and the two co-protagonists are both Annabeth and Grover. So if you want to know more about the trio, definitely read that. The reading order that I would suggest if you're just gonna read those is Percy Jackson and the Olympians, and then Chalice of the Gods, or Percy Jackson then Heroes of Olympus, and then Chalice of the Gods. Trials of Apollo is like a special treat that you get in the end, because by that point, you've already read 11 books in the series, so you're going to want to read more. That's just the way it works with Rick Riordan. You just keep coming back for more. So those are the big three series that are tied together, because they're all in the Greek world. But Rick Riordan has written about different gods from different cultures that still live in the same Percy Jackson universe, and where the characters still interact with each other and with the person Jackson characters. So if you keep craving content, but this time you want something like more bite-sized, you can have the Cain Chronicles trilogy. This trilogy follows two siblings and the Egyptian gods. Now this one actually came out after Percy Jackson and the Olympians and at the same time almost as the Heroes of Olympus. So you can read it whenever you want because it's not connected to them. The only thing they have in common is that there's gods and it's in New York sometimes. So you can read this whenever you like. Book number one is The Red Pyramid, followed by book number two, The Throne of Fire, and finally book number three in the series, The Serpent's Shadow. As I said, you can read this whenever you want. They're very easy to read. It has dual point of view. It has Sadie, the 
sister and Carter, the brother. There's loads of lovable characters and lots of action and magic, and it's a very different magic system, so you should pick this up. They're pretty neat, but you don't have to if you just want to read Percy Jackson. This is literally just a bonus. This is the for dummy section, so I shouldn't be really saying this, but there are some short stories with both characters from the Percy Jackson books and the King Chronicles books called Demigods and Magicians. It's a mix of both. If you want to know more about Percy and Annabeth and Percybeth in general, maybe you should read the King Chronicles so then you can consume content like this. This is great. Enough about companion novels, let's talk about the other trilogy that Rick Riordan has written, and that is Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. So as I said, it's a trilogy, came out at the same time as Trials of Apollo. However, you don't need to read this to read Trials of Apollo. You don't need to have read any book technically whatsoever to read Magnus Chase. This is like the King Chronicles, parallel the main universe, even though they interact. You might recognize the name Chase from Annabeth Chase, and that is because Magnus is her mortal cousin. But that's basically the only connection to the main books. So the first book we have in this trilogy is The Sword of Summer, where Annabeth made a tiny brief cameo at the beginning. Then we have The Hammer of Thor, book number two, and finally book number three is The Ship of the Dead, where both Percy and Annabeth have a small cameo at the beginning and at the end of the book. Once again, if you're like me and you pick up any crumb that you have of Percy, then this book is for you. And if you like Norse mythology, it's also very interesting, so I would recommend picking this up. It's one of my favorites. However, this is the version for dummies, so do you need to read Magnus Chase to understand the Percy Jackson world whatsoever. You do not. I just recommend reading the first main three series if you are just meaning to read about Percy Jackson. However, you will be so hooked that you will want to come back and read this. If you have any doubt in your mind that you might read this, skip to the publishing order and use that one for this series and for the Trials of Apollo because they intersect somewhat. You might want to know the order to read this in. But that's it for series. No more trilogies, no more nothing, except... Then we have the one standalone that we have, and that is The Sun and the Star, a Nico D'Angelo adventure. Can you guess who this follows? <laughs> That's right, Nico D'Angelo. I left this one here for the end because this is one of the last books published, so it's pretty easy to know when to read it. It's the last one in the timeline. This basically follows Nico D'Angelo after the events of Trials of Apollo. There you go. That's when you read it. If you like Nico, because Nico is in the main series, the Percy Jackson the Olympian series, and you want to read this one, I I would highly advise, at the very least, reading up to Heroes of Olympus. If you don't want to read Trials of Apollo but want to pick this one up, you're going to be very confused, so at least read a summary of what Trials of Apollo is about, because it also follows Will Solace, a child of Apollo, who is more prevalent in the Trials of Apollo books than in any other books, and it also follows their relationship, and you're gonna be quite lost as to what the status of their relationship is and how it came to be if you haven't read Trials of Apollo. To read this one, I would say, at the very least, read obviously Percy Jackson and the Olympians. I would advise reading Heroes of Olympus because Nico is also a main character in that last book. Please read Trials of Apollo as well. If you make it to this book then what's five more books, you know? And definitely read this after Chalice of the Gods because Chalice of the Gods is here and this one is over here. There's also a thousand companion books that you can read while reading the Percy Jackson books but the only ones that I would recommend reading for dummies or for people who don't want to be too invested are The Demigod Files and The Demigod Diaries. This has several short stories that you don't have to read. This one has one with Talia and Nico. Oh, that one's great. It has one with Clarice and it also has one with Beckendorf and Annabeth, which is really cute. This one has one with Piper, Leo, and Jason. It also has a great Persebeth one. I think that you should read this too. If you want to know when, this one I would just say that read it after book three read because nobody can pinpoint when this one goes. It's just impossible. Just read it with the publishing order or after book three, after the Titan Scourge. And for this one, I would say after Son of Neptune before Mark of Athena is the place to read it. These are the two that I would recommend. I talk in depth about when to read the other ones, but they're not really important because they don't add to the plot at all. These are the only ones that do besides Demigods and Magicians. So if you want to know more about these, go into publishing order or chronological order. There's these two as well, but for someone who just wants to know the basics and to know the plot. These don't add to the plot, so I don't think you need to read them. I will talk about them in my other sections of the video.
video, so stay tuned if you want to know, because they're very pretty. Depending on who you ask, they will tell you that the chronological way is the best way to read the books. That's just the way the story flows. Other people will tell you that the best way to read the books is in publishing order, since that's how Rick wrote them, and that's the best way to not get any spoilers whatsoever. Because let's face it, Rick is not the best at plot holes and continuity, and I happen to agree with this last point of view. I think publishing order is your best bet, so let's go through it. So the first book we have here is Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, published in 2005. This is the book that started it all, and this is the book that has been adapted into Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, that movie, yes, and into Percy Jackson and the Olympians season one on Disney+. Plus. This is the bare minimum, people. Could you read this technically as a standalone? Yes, you could. I do not know why you would. If you've watched the movie, if you've seen the show, you know that this kind of ends in like a cliffhanger and it leaves you wanting more. After this, in publishing order, we have The Sea of Monsters, published just one year later in 2006. Of course, this is the natural progression of the story, which is, of course, then followed by The Titan's Curse, book three in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series and published in 2007. Now, any normal human being would assume that book four is next in the publishing order, and you would be wrong, because I am not a normal human being. I'm someone who has spent hours upon hours of my life researching this goddamn reading order, and actually, after this, published in 2008, we don't have book four, we have demigods and monsters. This book was published January 2008, months before book four. Technically, it does come before book four in publishing order. Do I recommend that you spend your money on this or read this? No. Nobody knows about this book and I feel like it's warranted because this isn't a book that Rick wrote. This is a bunch of essays that other authors wrote about the series. I do not recommend that you pick this up because honestly, when I bought this at 13 years old, excited to have more content, I was like, what the f is this? This isn't Percy, this isn't even Rick Riordan. So unless you're like a super collector like I am or someone who didn't know what they were buying, I would not recommend you buying this. However, after this, in the very same year, we have one of the best books in the series, Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth. This, of course, is book four in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. It's the second to last book in the series, and I can hear you saying, surely now we'll get book five. No more interruptions. You'd be wrong, because after book four, published as we know in 2008, we get not one, not two, but three books, all published 2009. And the first one isn't book five in the series, it's The Demigod Files. This time it's a companion novel with mini games inside it and also interviews with the campers and several short stories that take place in different times throughout the first five books. Now, when to read those short stories specifically, that is not part of the chronological order. So if you want to know when to read each and every one of those short stories, you're gonna have to jump to the chronological portion of this video. Because right now we just care that this was published at the beginning of 2009, and therefore it should be read after Battle of the Labyrinth. Rick didn't stop with his companion novels. He published another one that same year. This, I would say, adds absolutely nothing to the story. This is completely for collectors only. It features the original official art, and if you know me, you know I believe that it's actually cursed. Not only that, but it has little cards so you can have this and this and even this engraved in your mind forever. Honestly, if you want to know more about the gods and the monsters and life at Camp Have Blood, this is a good book to have. It's generally entertaining and it's a short read intended for middle schoolers. It's not necessary whatsoever for the plot of the books. So if you're between this one and Demigod Files, I would highly recommend that you just get Demigod Files. But after this, it's 2009 still, Rick Riordan publishes his last book of the year. Finally, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, book five, Percy Jackson and the Last Olympian. Regarded by many as one of Rick Riordan's absolute best books 
ever. And he's published many books, so it's high praise. This book is the natural conclusion to the five book series. If you just want to read those five books, that's perfectly fine. You could end there. It's fun, but we're doing publishing order, so of course it doesn't end here. After this, though, he kept on publishing. The year after Rick wrote and published this book, Rick also published his first non-Percy Jackson book, called The Red Pyramid, book one in The King Chronicles. Now, The King Chronicles is a trilogy, not a five book series, so it's much easier and quicker to read, although it is a bit thicker than the usual Percy Jackson books. It has nothing to do with Percy Jackson, it's just kids and gods, that's their main connection. They do happen in the same universe and they do have crossovers later on, but if you want to read just Percy Jackson or just The King Chronicles, you can do so, no problem. No problem. So Rick came out with his first novel on Percy Jackson book in 2010, but this is not the only thing that he published in 2010. No, because he also published The Lost Hero, book one in the Heroes of Olympus series. Now this, as opposed to this, is an actual five book series that follows the Greek gods and campers from Camp Half-Blood. However, as anyone who's opened this to the first chapter will attest, Percy Jackson is not the main character. I know, I know, no one saw this coming. So instead of Percy, we have a new trio, and our main characters are Jason, Piper, and Leo. As I said before, we do, however, have cameos from Annabeth, and other Percy Jackson-related characters are important throughout the rest of the series. So if you love Annabeth and you love Percy, then you'll want to keep reading The Heroes of Olympus. These two came out in the same year. This one does follow the Percy Jackson Greek gods thing, and this one does not. Can be read completely separately. So after this, 2010, what a year. We have 2011. So it's 2011, and we're keeping up with the trend of Rick Riordan publishing two books a year. So the first book that we get is this one, The Throne of Fire, book two in the King Chronicles trilogy. Now, of course, if you're reading the King Chronicles, this is a must read as it is the second book in the trilogy. And after this, still 2011, we have the second book in the Heroes of Olympus, The Son of Neptune. And as you can guess from the cover and the name, we have our boy Percy back. And surprisingly, that's everything for that year. But don't worry, he kept publishing more and more and more. Let's see what he published the following year, 2012. Once again, 2012 was a good year for Rick Riordan, for he published three different books. He started the year off with the conclusion of The King Chronicles, book number three in the series, The Serpent's Shadow. Now this completely wraps up this story, so if you just want to read that, you can just read that. This is it. This is the final King Chronicles books. There were short stories later on where they do appear. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. So as I said, this is not the only book that Rick published in 2012. No, the second book he published was The Demigod Diaries. If this sounds familiar, it's because it's very similar to The Demigod Files. It's also a companion novel with several like interviews, little games, little illustration, and most importantly, short stories following characters from Percy Jackson and the Olympians and the Heroes of Olympus. So as you can see, Heroes of Olympus and Percy Jackson are very closely knit together, given that they follow the same gods and the same characters mostly. This is a tricky one to place in chronological order because it has short stories from Luke's perspective, from Annabeth and Percy before Heroes of Olympus, and from the Lost Hero trio before the rest of the Heroes of Olympus stories come up. So if you want to know exactly when to read each of these short stories, jump to that chronological portion of the video. However, if you choose to read this in chronological order, like I did, because I read them as they were being published, just read it after Son of Neptune and before Mark of Athena, and you'll be good, obviously, having read every single other book in the series that I've talked about so far. But of course, Book wasn't satisfied with just publishing two books in 2012. So he published the book that killed us all and left us dead for a year until he published the next one. And that is none other than Mark of Athena. Anyone who read Mark of Athena when it came out can attest that 2012 was a horrible year to survive. This book ends with the biggest required and cliffhanger in history. And it's not a fun cliffhanger. It's literally the most traumatic cliffhanger that I have ever experienced. So after reading this one, you're going to want to pick up the next one that he published the year after. You would think that the next book you should read in publishing order would be book four, but of course you'd be wrong. Do you remember the King Chronicles and Percy Jackson and the Olympians? Well, imagine those two coming together and having a baby. That's what Rick decided to do in 2013. This book, Demigod and Magician, was published in three 
different years because it contains three short stories and instead of just publishing them at once, Rick just decided to feed us crumbs and publish each of those stories in a different year. So although this book was published much later on, the first short story in this book, called The Son of Sobek, was actually released in June 2013, and therefore I feel the need to mention it here in the publishing order. If you want to read things in publishing order, you have to pick up this book now, even though this was published in like 2018, and read just the first short story, Son of Sobek. It follows an adventure between Percy Jackson and Carter Kane from the Kane Chronicles. Just read the first one, we'll see this pop up later twice because, as I said, this has three short stories. But speaking of the publishing order, just pick up the first one for now. But now it's still 2013 and it's finally time for the fourth book in the Heroes of Olympus, yes, House of Hades, the book that murdered us all. I'm pretty sure that if you read Mark of Athena, you're going to want to pick this one up right afterwards instead of picking up the Son of Sobek, but still I felt it was worth a mention. So yeah, this is the fourth book in the series and it will kill you as you read you're going to suffer but you will be happy about it. That's what this book does to you. And after this, finally 2014, we do not have the fifth book in the series, no. We have the second short story in Demigods and Magicians, The Staff of Seraphis. This time, it doesn't follow Percy and Carter, it follows Annabeth Chase, who we all know and love, and Sadie Kane, who we all know is Carter Kane's sister from the Kane Chronicles. I know you might not feel like reading this before book number five in Heroes of Olympus, but just know that short story, the second short story in Demigod Some Magicians, is next in publishing order. We're still not through with this, but let's move on to what else was published in 2014. So in August 2014, we have another book that's not part of a big series, and that is Percy Jackson and the Greek Gods, probably one of the biggest in the series, and honestly, one of the biggest books that I own. It's also also extremely heavy and works really well as a paperweight. So this book, you're probably confused. Honestly, I'm still confused and I've read this. This is a beautifully illustrated book. It's technically told from Percy's perspective, but it doesn't follow a plot. This is basically an encyclopedia of the Greek gods and their stories told with Percy's voice. So at the beginning of the book, we have a reference to Percy writing this for extra credit, whatever that might mean, because I don't think it makes sense in canon anymore. This is not not necessary to own or to read to understand the main plot of the series. Once again, this is just a book that collectors might want to have because honestly, it's beautiful. The art style is very nice and you get to hear from Percy once again. However, as I said, irrelevant to the plot. After that tiny companion novel, we get another book in October 2014 and that is the fifth and last book in the Heroes of Olympus series. Blood of Olympus, what to say about this book besides that it's the final book in this this series. If you just want to read the main, main series, if you're just here for the Percy Jackson-ness of it all, just read Percy Jackson and the Olympians and the Heroes of Olympus, honestly. That's all you have to do. If you want Percy as the main character, that's what you get. You don't need to read anything after this. However, the Percy Jackson series timeline, woven together by the Greek gods, does have another series after this. Although Percy Jackson is not a main character or a featured character that much in the next series, Trials of Apollo, Trials of Apollo does follow this series directly and does include many of the main characters there as side characters or featured characters. So if you do enjoy the Heroes of Olympus, if you enjoy the Seven or Nico D'Angelo specifically and enjoy the character of Apollo and love Camp Half Blood and Camp Jupiter, then I do advise that you keep on reading Trials of Apollo because it is the other big main series in the universe. It's like a, a trilogy of series, of five book series. We have Percy Jackson and the Olympians, we have Heroes of Olympus, and then we have the Trials of Apollo. Inside that trilogy, we do have the first two, Percy and Heroes of Olympus, that can be read independently without Trials of Apollo. And you can still be happy, that is, if you like this ending. So it's finally 2015, and for the first time in 10 years, Rick Riordan is not writing a huge series because he's finally done 
with Percy Jackson and the Olympians, he's done with the King Chronicles, and he's also done with the Heroes of Olympus. So what's next? I'll tell you what's next. <laughs> it's the third short story in Demigods and Magicians, The Crown of Ptolemy. I've never known how to pronounce that. I'm sorry to this man. So this short story finally follows Percy, Carter, Annabeth, and Sadie all together. All these short stories are very low stakes. You know, there's like, oh, we have to do this to save the world, but you know, it's like 30 pages song so it, the world isn't actually going to end in a random short story. These short stories and specifically this last one are just basically for the fans who just want to know more about their favorite characters. If you're a fan of Persebeth or if you like the King Chronicles and you want more from them because there's honestly not a lot of content, if you're someone like that I would really really recommend this. This is one of my favorite companion novels because it's literally just the short stories and I feel like that's the most valuable part because it adds to the canon. So if you like both Percy Jackson and the King Chronicles, I would highly recommend that you get this. And after Blood of Olympus, I promise you, you will be left with a need to read more Percebeth. That's a fact. After that, however, still in 2015, we get our second huge Percy Jackson book, Percy Jackson and the Greek Heroes. The other one was called Percy Jackson and the Greek Gods. It talked about the Greek Gods. Can you guess what this one talks about? That's right, the Greek Heroes. Basically, this is another encyclopedia told in Percy's voice about the most famous Greek heroes that there are. Honestly, it adds nothing to the story. It also contains no spoilers, so you could technically read this whenever. I would suggest, though, to read it in the publishing order, just in case. There's spoilers about Greek heroes, and that might come up in the books and there's also spoilers about the Greek gods and their stories in the other one. Technically not a spoiler if you know Greek mythology, but if you don't, I would just recommend reading this in publishing order. As I said before, this is also one of those books that you don't need to have, you don't need to read it, adds nothing to the story. However, it's visually very pleasing and if you enjoy Greek mythology and history, I would say that this is also a very entertaining read. If you miss, as I said before, being inside Percy's head, because who doesn't, I would also recommend this because his voice is all over this and it's just so good. It feels like being back home. I would suggest this for really, really big Percy Jackson fans and collectors. Ah! So I hear you saying, that's it. It's We've come to the natural conclusion, no more books. But no, it's still 2015 and Rick Riordan hits us with his first book in a new series, a trilogy about the Norse gods, this time called Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. So we have start, of course, with book number one, Magnus Chase and the Sword of Summer. You might be thinking, Chase, now there is a familiar name. I've heard that before. And you would be right. Magnus Chase, and this is not a spoiler, it's the synopsis. Magnus Chase is the mortal cousin of Annabeth Chase. So if you want a little bit more Annabeth content, don't get too excited because Annabeth does show up at the beginning of this book and that she does cameo. I don't know if book two, but definitely book three. If you want a little bit of Annabeth and a hint to what she might be doing with her life, this is where to find that. So this book is the first one in a trilogy about the gods of Asgard, the Norse gods, you know, Thor, Loki, all of those. It's very entertaining and also happens to be my favorite trilogy from Rick by Orden. But of course, Rick by Orden did not stop here. But that's it for 2015. In 2016, we have the official release of all three of these in a paperback. Because before this, they weren't published, you know, traditionally. We just had the ebook versions of them. Let the record show that I did show when this was actually published as a physical copy. Follow the instructions from before. I don't think this is a time or place to read this. I think it's when I said before, so do that. It's still 2016 and Rick has decided that writing a new trilogy isn't challenging enough. He wants to write another five book series and so he publishes book one in The Trials of Apollo, The Hidden Oracle. This book is book number one in a series following Apollo who kind of offended Zeus in Blood of Olympus and therefore is facing the punishment of becoming a mortal. That's right, Apollo, one of the cockiest and most powerful gods in the Greek pantheon, is turned into just a measly teenager and thrown into a dumpster in New York as he seeks Percy Jackson's help. And Percy's like, okay, I'll take you to camp, but that's it. So that's basically all the Percy Jackson that we get in this book. He does cameo once again in the final book. Does he? Am I making that up? I don't know. I think he does. But it does follow Apollo and another young demigod called Meg as they go to Camp Half-Blood and then the shenanigans that they cause in Camp Half-Blood. If you love Camp Half-Blood, if you love Nico D'Angelo and 
Will Solace, then you'll really, really enjoy this book. This book has all the Camp Half Blood vibes and it's just so good. It's very entertaining and Apollo has probably the best character arc in all Rick Ryder in history, just because he starts at such a low point. The arc is so good. Maybe it doesn't rival Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender, but it's very good. And we love to see it. So it is still 2016. 2016, what a year for Rick Ryder and fans, because we got, again, three different things published. That's six. We got three different things published. But before we get to our next main one, we have our first companion novel for The Gods of Asgard, which I do not own, so here it is. It's Hotel Valhalla Guide to the Norse Gods, your introduction to deities, mythological beings, and fantastic creatures. This is a direct lead to the next book in the series, also published in the same year. I have not read it, but I feel like it might be like the Percy Jackson one, talking more about the gods and no short stories. So once again, I think this one is for collectors and very, very big fans. It doesn't add to the story, so if you're just interested in the actual canon, pick up the next book that was published in 2016, and that is book number two in the Magnus Chase trilogy, of course, The Hammer of Thor. And with this book being published, we start to see the trend of the next coming years, and that is one Trials of Apollo book, one Magnus Chase book. Obviously, there's just three Magnus Chase books. It doesn't happen that much after this. The correct publishing order is one Trials of Apollo, one Magnus Chase. You can't read them chronologically. You can't read all of Trials of Apollo and then all of Magnus Chase. That is not the publishing order. I will talk about the chronological order later on because it's important because as Annabeth is in both of those stories, we get a little bit of overlap and maybe like a tiny, tiny spoiler to the plot. Stick to the publishing order and you won't get spoiled for anything. After after this, however, we're finally in 2017 and we get the first of three books published that year and that is Camp Half-Blood Confidential. Now this time, although it is a Camp Half-Blood companion novel, it mainly focus on characters from The Trials of Apollo. This is all told in Apollo's voice. This is my favorite companion novel of all time. Honestly, does it add to the plot? Not really, because it doesn't have short stories per se, but it has glimpses at the life of Camp Half-Blood. We do get a little bit of Percy, we do get a little bit of Nico and Will, and different campers that we all know and love. We also have our first glimpse and we get to see the orientation video that is mentioned in so many Camp Half-Blood related books. So it's really good, it's really fun. Apollo is such a great character. If you were to buy only one companion novel, outside of the ones that have short stories, I would say get this one. It is so fun. I'm looking forward to reading it again in my next reread. So yeah, this is the first book published in 2017 and what a way to start. Your real guide to the demigod training camp. Then still in 2017, we have the second book of the trials of Apollo, The Dark Prophecy. And in case you don't know, each different book of the trials of Apollo includes different cameos and featurings of different heroes of Olympus characters. So if before we had Nico and, you know, technically Will is also a heroes of Olympus character, here we have Leo, Valdez, and Calypso, everyone's favorite couple. This is book number two in the series, and this time we are outside Camp Half Blood, and we won't be back at Camp Half Blood in this series until book five. So unfortunately, if you're a Will and Nico fan, you will have to wait till book five in the series. Remember, publishing order, you read this after the second book in Magnus Chase and before the third one. Speaking of, also in 2017, of course, because Rick is absolutely crazy, we have the third and final book in the Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard trilogy, The Ship of the Dead. If you're either a Percy fan, an Annabeth fan, or a Percybeth fan, then you will be happy to know that they make like a five minute cameo at the beginning of this book, and I'm sure Magnus calls Annabeth at the end of this book, so there's also like a little telephone conversation cameo. This is the third and final book in this trilogy, and honestly, I thought it was quite fun, but I'm not gonna reveal my official ranking for these books in this video, that's for another video, but I already kind of have it here, so you can go watch that there. I'm pretty sure there's major spoilers in there, so be careful. Third and final book in the series. After this, we do get another companion novel, which I will mention shortly. If you like Magnus Chase, this is unfortunately the end. So we're creeping closer to our actual timeline and we are finally in 2018 and of course Rick did not stop publishing there. So he published the third book in The Trials of Apollo, probably the most painful book that Rick has published in the last 
decade, yeah, because Marco Fafina was published before that. So very painful book. If you go into this one just now, it's intense. So this is the third book, as I said, and here instead of having Leo or Calypso, we have Jason and Piper. And oh my god, if you like them as a couple, then this is going to be a wild ride. I, I would suggest that you read this if you liked Jasper. This includes Jasper. It does! So yeah, I would say that any Heroes of Olympus fan should read these books just because it does have the seven and it features them quite prominently. So if you want to know what they're doing with their lives and how the couples are doing, then I would highly suggest picking this up. Third book of the series and first book of 2018. Then we have the King Chronicles Survival Guide. This is also just a collector's thing. It's like the same thing as the Percy Jackson one, but with Egyptian gods. So if you like that idea, you'll like this one. Next up in 2018, we have another companion novel that I do not own because it's not Percy Jackson related. And it is the Brooklyn House Magician's Manual. It came out in May and honestly, it looks good. I don't think it adds anything to the story. So if you are a fan of the King Chronicles and you are a collector, then I do advise that you should probably buy this. It, it looks fun, but I don't think it adds anything. So if you just want like plot related things, you can let this one go. Next up, still in 2018, of course, we have another companion novel that I do not own because it's not Percy Jackson related. This time it's a Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard one called Nine from the Nine World. And I do believe that this one follows nine short stories of nine different characters. I don't think that all of them feature the main characters from the main trilogy, but I do believe that some of them do. I would recommend buying this one over other ones just because it features short stories. Moving on to 2019. So it is 2019 and if you're like, me, you are still buying Rick Riordan books. That's right. 14 years after the first Lightning Thief book came out, you're still buying Percy Jackson related books and you are buying book number four in the Trials of Apollo series, The Tyrant's Tomb. Now this time, instead of featuring our other Heroes of Olympus characters, since it's set in Camp Jupiter, we have Reina Avila Ramirez Arellano, Frank Sang, and Hazel Levesque. Now almost all of this takes place in Camp Jupiter, so if you enjoy Camp Jupiter, then definitely keep going on with this series. There's really not that much to say. This is the fourth book. It's the second to last book in the series and it features the characters that I just said and also the fallout of book number three. The next book in 2019 that Rick published was, oh my god, that was the only book that he published in 2019, showing us a trend that he was going to start to slow down a bit. And honestly, who can fault him? Because for the past couple of years, that man had been publishing three books a year. And if they aren't written by ghostwriters, then we owe that man so much respect. So the next year after that would be obviously 2020, our favorite year. And in 2020, Rick wrote his last two books before a three-year hiatus, and the first one is this one. <sighs> Camp Jupiter Classified, A Privacious Journal. This is my least favorite of the companion novels that I own. This is the second and last companion novel to The Trials of Apollo, the first one of course being the absolute best companion novel of all time, The Camp Half-Blood Confidential, and unfortunately even though Camp Half-Blood Confidential is 100 out of 100, this one is 50 out of 100 for me, I thought it was boring. It follows another camper that is not in any of the other books, so I don't know why we follow her. And, it, you know, it features a lot of other different campers. So we do see from Frank and we do see from Hazel and Reyna, I imagine. But honestly, I think this adds nothing to the story or to the experience of reading the other Trials of Apollo books. So it, just save yourself the trouble. Don't read this one. If you like Camp Jupiter, then I guess pick it up. And if you're a collector, then I guess pick it up as well. But just so you know, I wasn't really into this. I thought it was boring. Might be my Camp Half Blood bias showing, but honestly, just I don't think it's worth the read. And I don't say that about many Rick Riordan books. I think I always say it about this one. So the last and final book that Rick wrote in 2020 before the hiatus is book five in the Trials of Apollo, and that is Tower of Nero. I have a vlog for the book tour and also a review for this book and maybe also a reading vlog. So go watch all of those. This book was very, very impactful. Probably this one and the first one are the best in the whole series. If books two, three, and four don't hook you, then I would say just like, like hold on to this one because it's definitely worth it. This one follows our characters who once again are in Camp Half-Blood. So Nico and Will are very prominent characters in this book once again. We also see everyone's favorite redhead again, Rachel Illa 
Elizabeth there, who once again is important because being an oracle, a book all about oracles, you know, she has to be in it. I do believe that Percy and Annabeth also feature at the very end of this book, so if you want to see a little bit of them or hear about what they're doing right now, then I do suggest you picking this up. So this is the last fifth and final book in the Trials of Apollo series, marking an official end to the Camp Half-Blood series. As I said before, Camp Half-Blood series has three main series with five books each, and that would be Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Heroes of Olympus, and The Trials of Apollo. The first one of this Camp Half-Blood series would be The Lightning Thief, and the last official one is The Trials of Apollo, The Tower of Nero. So this would be the place where you could just like put the books down and that's it. If you, however, like Nico D'Angelo and Will Solis, do I have a treat for you? It's true that Rick Riordan decided to stop publishing like a madman after 2020, but if you think that guy was rusting, then you don't know Uncle Rick at all, because Uncle Rick was trying to get Disney Plus to pick up a Percy Jackson TV show. The rest is history, obviously, we all know what happened, but it was a long process, so he dedicated all of his efforts to that. On the side, he wrote his first adaptation, Daughter of the Deep, an adaptation of Jules Burns' A Hundred Leagues Under the Sea, is that what it's called? This has nothing to do with Percy Jackson, it is, however, another middle grade book, and it's very good. Honestly, I would suggest that you read it, because it's very entertaining, and it might be getting a Disney Plus movie adaptation soon. But after his writing hiatus, when everyone thought that the Camp Half-Blood Chronicles were done, we weren't getting any more series, any more trilogies, of course Rick Riordan just shocked us with the news that we were getting another standalone book, a thick book, not a companion novel, that we've never gotten before from Rick Riordan, and it was going to follow none other than Nico D'Angelo, and he said that it was going to be called the Sun and the Star, a Nico D'Angelo adventure. So of course the internet exploded with the news. I do have a whole reading vlog and review, I think, for this one, so if you want to know more, then I suggest you go watch that. There's probably like a spoiler-free section. This story follows Nico D'Angelo and Will Salas traveling into Tartarus on purpose, and I'm not gonna spoil any more than that. If you like those characters, if you enjoy them as a pair, and if you want to see a little bit of a Percy and Annabeth cameo, this book has it all. It is the first and only book in the Percy Jackson Chronicles co-written by none other than Mark Oshiro. We don't know if this is gonna be a trend and if we're gonna get more standalones with co-authors. Can you tell that it's co-written? You can definitely tell. But it's still very enjoyable read. And if you're an Eco D'Angelo fan, which I fear many of you are, or many of you will be after reading the books, then I do suggest that you pick this up. Being a standalone, it doesn't have the high stakes of the other books, but still, it's very sweet, it's very emotional, it'll take you places, and I do suggest you read it. However, as I said, it does not move the main plot forward. Nothing will anymore, I don't think. Then in that very same year, we also got a book that probably broke the internet because Rick Riordan just announced that he wasn't done writing Percy Jackson and the Olympians and that he was going to publish Percy Jackson and the Olympians number six before the TV show came out. I know, I know, number six, Shrewd and I have mentioned it before. Remember, this is publishing order. So yes, Rick Riordan wrote and published Percy Jackson and the Olympians Olympians number six, more than a decade after he left off with book five, which was supposedly the last book in the series. So here we have a new Rick Riordan book. Not only that, but a new Percy Jackson and the Olympians book. This book, Percy Jackson and the Chalice of the Gods, is book number six in the main and the first series. Now, I don't own it yet because my friend McKenna bought it for me and she's in New York, so I'm gonna go pick it up once I go there. This is probably one of my favorite new covers. It's just so pretty. Chronologically, this is kind of a messy book. Not because it's hard to place, but because if you read it in publishing order, then you're reading... It's very confusing, okay? So publishing order, it goes here. Just, just know that. Chronologically, I will say that it takes place after Percy Jackson and the Olympians and after Heroes of Olympus, but before Trials of Apollo. That's what's important. It takes place before Trials of Apollo. So this follows Percy in his senior year when he finds out that he has to complete three different quests in order to graduate. This is a minor spoiler, but also at the same time it isn't. So when we went into the book, nobody knew that this wasn't going to be a standalone sixth book. When you read the book, you notice that, wow, this book just follows one quest. But I did mention 
mentioned that we were going to follow three. So it turns out, and Rick announced it right after this, there are going to be two more books. So this is going to be a trilogy that takes place in the Percy Jackson, the Olympians timeline after those books. So now instead of having a five book series, this is technically an eight book series with the last three just lapped on 14 years later. So technically this is the last book that we have in the series. We did get an announcement to when the next one is going to be. It's called Percy Jackson and the Wrath of the Triple Goddess and it will be coming out September 2024. So this year, as you said before, three quests, three books. So unless it turns out that when we finally get our hands on this book, this one covers two quests, the most probable thing is that we're going to get number three or number eight in the series in 2025, probably September. Now this is a book clearly created to create hype around Percy Jackson once again and make people watch the show and then make people read the books and then have them have more content. This is clearly just for publicity, but also I have like three videos dedicated to just this book because I absolutely loved it. So I say this as a fan of the original series and as a fan who read these when I was 12. Reading this as a 24 year old, I still super enjoyed it and I think anyone can enjoy it. And if you like the first five books, you're gonna like this. Even if you didn't like anything else that Rick published, this one is for you because it feels like Rick took no breaks in between writing those. So if you want to know more and if you've missed a certain goat-legged character, then you are in for a treat because this trilogy technically not a trilogy, follows our main trio, Percy, Annabeth, and Grover, all in senior year. I mean, not Grover, but Percy and Annabeth. And it's just so good. It's like a chill adventure. Percy doing little quest from New York, not even in Camp Half-Blood. You'd be doing yourself a favor by picking this up. So that's the last book in the series in publishing order, which means that now we're free to talk about the actual chronological order. Strap in people, because this one is messy. I had to look at different sources. I had to pick my brains to remember what happened when. If you thought publishing order was complicated because there were three books a year for a while there, then you're not even ready for the mess that's going to be chronological book order. But we can get through this. If you are brave enough, then you can read the chronological book order. Do I suggest that you do so? Honestly, as someone who started reading the books when Mark of Athena was coming out, chronological order just wasn't in the cards for me and publishing order was just so much easier. So while I do suggest publishing order, if you're strong enough, if you want to read three books at the same time and just read short stories here and there, I suggest that this is the one for you. So let's look at the chronological chronological order. Okay, so the time for fun and games is gone. We're going to talk about how to read the damn series in chronological order. I have never done this because I read from Mark of Athena as they were publishing them, so I can't even imagine having to just read one short story here, then go back to a book, then go to a different series, then blah blah blah. I personally like to marathon things and marathon series in their completion. So going from one series to another would really rack my brains and I would forget everything about it. So this is not for me, but if you're crazy and if you want to know the true timeline in order, in chronological order, then this is for you. Let's go, let's do this. Okay, so if you made it this far, you clearly want how to read this in chronological order. Please stop, go back. Just just read the For Dummies version or read the publishing order, like go back. Please don't do this to yourself. Okay, so if you want to read it in the chronological order, you start by reading only one of the short stories in the Demigod Diaries, and that is Luke Castellan's diary, because apparently Luke Castellan had a diary while he ran away from his dad and he was with both Annabeth and Talia. That is where our story starts with Luke. Is this the best way to read the Percy Jackson series? I wouldn't advise it because even though this does happen prior to The Lightning Thief, it also is not how the story should be told. We shouldn't know about Luke and what he thinks about the gods from the beginning. So I do not advise reading this first, but chronologically, this short story, The Diary of Luke Castellan, is the first thing to happen. This is the first thing you should read. Only that in the Demigod Diaries. Moving on, what else should you read? So the next part is quite easy. First, we start again with The Lightning Thief, book one in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. Then we move on to book two, The Sea of Monsters. And finally, book three, The Titan's Curse. But of course, it's not that easy. So after you read these three, you make a pause. And you pick up Percy Jackson, 
Kingman and the Demigod Files, and you read, again, just one short story for this, Percy Jackson and the Stolen Chariot. This one could admittedly be read right after book two. I would advise reading it after book three, just in case. It basically follows Percy and Clarice on a very tiny side quest that is only important later on in the Heroes of Olympus. It's quite confusing. This is why I don't advise it. You need to have the whole Percy Jackson series plus two other books just to be able to read them in order. It's easier consumption wise to just read it one series at a time. But as I said, after reading the first three, you pick up this and you just read the Stolen Chariot one. Then you pick up book number four in the series, The Battle of the Labyrinth. Do you go on to book number five? <laughs> No, you do not. You pick up the Demigod Files yet again. And this time you read Percy Jackson and the Sword of Hades. Now, this is one of Rick Riordan's biggest plot holes because how can you place this into the timeline? Obviously, we have Talia, Percy, and Nico, meaning it's at the very least after Titan's Curse. But the things that happen and the way Nico and Percy interact and Percy and Talia is like, what is happening? When is this? Nobody knows, but it's an entertaining story between between the three of them, so I would suggest reading it, and I guess that's the perfect time to read it before the last book. And then you're like, okay, can we read the last book? Can we read the last Olympian? Now, we are not even in the right series, because right now, timeline-wise, it's the start of another series at the same time, and it's not Percy Jackson related. That's right, now we have to read the first book in the King Chronicles. So we read the first book, The Red Pyramid, and then we read the second one, The Throne of Fire. Just the first First two, right in the middle of finishing the Percy Jackson series, you put it down and you pick up these two. But you don't read the third one in the trilogy, no, no. Another one comes first. So after finally reading these two, you get to go back here, yes, to the Demigod Files and read Percy Jackson and the Bronze Dragon. This is a story that follows Annabeth, Beckendorf, Percy, and Selina, and a Bronze Dragon, which may or may not pop back up in the Heroes of Olympus, book one. So I would advise reading this before that, at least. But just now, this short story is also almost impossible, or basically, it's impossible, okay? It's impossible to pinpoint in the timeline because it happens after the Battle of the Labyrinth, but before the 4th of July fireworks show, which is impossible, so you're like, okay, so it happens the summer of the last book, but that's impossible because Beckendorf and Selena aren't dating yet, and in the summer of the last book, they have been dating for almost a year, so this must happen in the summer of the Battle of the Labyrinth, but that's impossible because it's before the 4th of July, and if the Battle of the Labyrinth took place before the 4th of July, then why aren't Annabeth and Percy awkward with each other? How is Percy about to ask Annabeth out in this one? It's confusing and it's impossible. It's literally impossible to pinpoint in the timeline because this is atemporal. It just happens in a summer, nobody knows when. Imagine if there was a like a, a sixth summer between the fourth and the fifth one, that's where this one would go. So read this one. So after you do all that, now is finally the time to pick up Percy Jackson, the Olympians, number five, The Last Olympian. Finally, one of the greatest books, if not the greatest, that Rick Riordan has ever written. After that, we get to one of the only books that I do not own. It's Percy Jackson and the Singer of Apollo. It's basically like this. It's just a short story about Percy, something to do with Apollo, and Grover, and right now is a perfect place to read it. I haven't read it yet, actually. <laughs> I'm very ashamed. I didn't know this existed because there was no physical copy for ages, so I just I didn't know until there was a reference to it in The Chalice of the Gods, and I was like, what? What is this referencing? Why haven't I seen this? Well, if you want to get that reference, read this book. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's not. Probably probably good, right? It's, it's for Rick it's Percy Jackson. I don't know if it's relevant to the plot, but at the very least, there's a reference to it in The Chalice of the Gods. And after all that, we get to pick up up the Demigod Diaries once again because we've neglected it for a couple of books now. You get to pick it up and read just one more short story and that is the one that's on the cover, Percy Jackson and the Staff of Hermes. If you're a Percy Beth fan, you're gonna love this one. This one happens like a month, exactly a month actually, after the ending of The Last Olympian. Celebrating their one month anniversary of having won or lost, you'll just have to read the books. So they're celebrating and Hermes asks them to do a special quest for them, as per usual. And after reading that side quest, you can finally read the third and last book in the King Chronicles trilogy, The Serpent's Shadow. Read this and be done with it and be glad. 
because now it's your turn to start yet another series, and that is The Lost Hero from the Heroes of Olympus series. As I said before, this is one of the main two series, but this time, if you're following this order, you have to jump through hoops to finally get here, and you finally got in here, only to find out as you open and you get to the first chapter, who the f is Jason you want to know the worst part is that you don't even get to read the second book right after that you don't get to see the book where Percy is you have to pick this right back up and read a short story about Leo Valdez and the quest for Beaufort Beaufort is a magic table you have to read it you have to read it you you committed to doing the chronological order so you have to read this before you get to Son of Neptune sucks to be you and you don't get to pick up the next book either you have to read another short story here you have to read Son of Magic and Son of Magic is not even written by Rick Riordan. I think it's written by his son. And to be honest, I was quite bored when I read it, so it's my least favorite. But you decided, you decided on chronological order. Yeah, it doesn't even follow Percy Jackson characters. It's just random demigods. So you decided this is your choice. You have to read this. Ha! But don't worry, eventually, eventually, you do get to pick up The Son of Neptune, book number two in the Heroes of Olympus series. This is your reward for having been strong all along. Will Percy and Annabeth made in this book? Well, you won't be finding out soon because you don't get to read book number three. No, 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 no. You, my friend, get to pick up Percy Jackson and the Greek Gods. Does this have anything to do with the plot? Not at all, my friend. Not at all. But you said you wanted to read chronological order and this is it. This is it, buddy. But as a reward for your strength, you do get to pick up the third book of the Heroes of Olympus after that, and that is The Mark of Athena. But this time, instead of having to wait three books to read the fallout of the greatest cliffhanger in history, you actually get to read the next book in order. So, I mean, the gods were smiling on us on that one. You lucked out. So your next two books are actually going to be in order. You get book number four and book number five. So House of Hades and Blood of Olympus, lucky you. And that marks the ending to the second big series in the Percy Jackson universe. So we have already checked off Percy Jackson the Olympians, we have checked off the King Chronicles, and we have also checked off Heroes of Olympus. Where to go from here? Well, bigger and better, baby. That's where we go. We go to Percy Jackson and the Greek... Oh, this is the same one. Which one did I show before? I don't remember which one I showed before, but now we have Greek heroes. I'm just gonna pretend like I showed the other one. Greek heroes, this is what you have to read. So you don't get to start a new series. You just get to see this an anthology encyclopedia from Percy's point of view. Who knows how to describe this one? But moving on, we have a real treat for you, and that is Percy Jackson, Demigods, and Magicians. This follows both characters from Percy Jackson and the King Chronicles. Annabeth, Percy, Sadie, and Carter are the protagonists. We have some different team-ups, and in the end, there's the four of them. And honestly, this is a real treat. You should read it if you like the King Chronicles or if you like anything Percy Annabeth related. It's incredible. So this is a treat before starting another big series. And for the first time in forever, you can actually read the whole three stories and not just have have to pick one and then read another book and then pick one and then read another one you can read through this perfect finally we've gotten to the place where chronologically you could read chalice of the gods as i said before it's after percy jackson the olympians and after heroes of olympus and here is where it would go so obviously after chalice of the gods we haven't got in the book yet but we assume that wrath of the triple goddess is going to come chronologically following this and then the third book and final book from that series which obviously it hasn't even been announced but we're guessing it's going to be a third one so that would be the place to read it obviously if you're planning on doing that right now you have time because the second one is coming out in September and then the next one probably September 2025 so if you want to do this order I don't know what you're gonna do once you reach book three and it's not out you're just gonna have to wait that was your choice here is where things get really complicated because we got Trials of Apollo and Magnus Chase at the same time so you're just gonna have to what I mean by that these two books happen at the same time so you can pick up the Sword of Summer or the Hanging Oracle in whatever order just know that these two are your two options and instead of continuing with either of these series you get more companion novels you get Camp Half-Blood Confidential one of the best companion novels you're ever going to get and it's very relevant to the Trials of Apollo series it's told from Apollo's point of view we also get an orientation video here and it's incredible it features both Percy, Annabeth and Nico I believe probably also Will very good this is the one that I would always recommend and people it's not short stories it's just told from like um it's a real guide to the demigod training camp so i would advise you to read it it's very fun but it's not short stories but it's a it's the best guide that there is out of all the guides 
read it, it's the best. Then we have Brooklyn's House Manual, which I'm not holding in my hand because I do not own and I don't know if I should uh, recommend it to you because I haven't read it, but it's Rick Riordan, it's probably good. So it's a companion novel. It also is something like this, I'm guessing with no short stories, just like quizzes, games, and information in encyclopedia style. So if you want that, then do that. Now supplies to read it. Maybe it is short stories if it has a place in the chronological order. I don't know. I'm losing my mind at this point. Then we have my least favorite Rick Riordan book ever, and that is this one, The Count Jupiter Classified and Horatio's Journal. I think it adds nothing to the story. This one is actually told as a short story, a long short story of a character that we never see up till now and never see from now on. So I think this was completely useless. Like it adds nothing and it's boring. So if you want to read it, technically it leads into one of the uh, Trials of Apollo books, but I think that it's completely forgettable and you do not have to read it. If you don't really like Camp Jupiter, you don't have to read it. I'm getting bored just looking at it. Now would be the time to read Hotel Valhalla Guide to the Norse Worlds. It's not Percy Jackson related per se, so I do not own it. I have bought it, but it hasn't come yet. So read it, I have it, but you should. Back to our main two series. Once again, these happen almost at the exact same time. We don't know, Rick Riordan for sure doesn't know. So you can either pick Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, The Hammer of Thor, or The Charles of Apollo, book two, The Dark Prophecy. Pick whichever one you want, but just now, it's one of these two, baby. If you've been enjoying reading The Trials of Apollo, you're going to keep enjoying it because you finally get to read two, technically three, at once. It's so fun, finally, finally. You don't have to change series in the middle of a series. You can read book three if you want to have your heart crushed. It's the burning maze. And then if you want your heart stepped on, you can read book four, The Tyrant's Doom. And as we know, all of these feature characters from the Heroes of Olympus. So get ready for an emotional roller coaster. After this, you get another choice. Book three in the Magnus Chase trilogy or book five in the Trials of Apollo series. We get the Ship of the Dead versus Tower of Nero. How would I advise you read this? I don't remember because I read it a long time ago, but I think I would recommend reading this one and then reading this one. Honestly, publication order typically best, but you wanted to do chronological order. So you're just gonna have to read them at the same time, one chapter at a time and then change but I would recommend reading Ship of the Dead first. We're almost there. We finally got into The Sun and the Star, again, chronologically. This one, it's easy to know when to read because it just takes place after Trials of Apollo, and there's not much up to that. So this one goes later. As I said, it follows Nico and Will, who are featured prominently in Trials of Apollo. Nico is featured prominently as one of the main characters in the last book, Blood of Olympus, of the Heroes of Olympus, and one of the main side characters from book three of Percy Jackson and the Olympians. This is the time to read it. This might be the last book that we get in the timeline. The new ones that we're getting are obviously in right dab in the middle. Confusing, I know, but that's Rick Ryder for you. But this one is the second to last book that we've gotten and it's the last one chronologically. Do you think we're gonna get more books, like standalone books from side characters? I would wanna get a Hunters of Artemis book. That would be really fun. But that's just me daydreaming. And finally, the last book that you have to read chronologically is a nine from the nine worlds and these are nine short stories from the magnus and the gods of asgard universe once again haven't read it don't have it when should you read this well this one in my opinion never waste of time money and space this one whenever you want obviously i would say with the main percy jackson series it's a, a companion novel to that it's the ultimate guide to the gods so obviously not because later on we got so many ultimate guides but that's it, that's the last book that you have to, I mean, no, not that one. You can just read it whenever you want. But the one that I mentioned before is the last one. So you have to read Chronologically. Does your head feel like it's going to explode? Because mine does, and I could say I told you so. I advised you against going with the chronological order because it's just madness, madness, I tell you. So once again, I have to say, either choose the version for dummies, and that is to say the, the bare bones of how to read this, or just go with publishing order. It's just so much easier for you and for me. Once again, I'm letting you know that I have created a PDF with instructions 
detailed instructions on how to read these. So if this video wasn't comprehensive enough, if you weren't taking notes while you watched this video, then you can just go download that PDF and enjoy. Enjoy this process because I wish I could be reading these books for the first time again. You've reached the end of the video and as a present, you get a special unboxing. <laughs> this is the 11 grade box for the month of January and today we're unboxing it, so let's go. FYI, I am a rep for Illumicrate, so right now if you use the code UNCLAIMED5, you will get a 5% discount code off three and six month book subscription plans. January box, let's go. So the theme is murder mystery, but it's interesting because it looks not a theme. I'm not looking at spoilers. So many goodies. Let's go to the first one. This one here, I think. Oh my god. This is an enamel phone grip inspired by Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark. Let's open it. The Ministry of Alchemy, Enchantments, and Supernatural Entities. It kind of looks like a sheriff's badge, but also like a supernatural kind of thing. I've never even heard of this fandom of this book, but now I'm super interested because anything alchemy related, sign me up. And I don't usually use these, but it's so cute that if I wasn't on my phone right now filming, that I would put this on my phone immediately. So that's what I'm going to do right afterwards. What else? I'm leaning towards opening this box. What's in the box? Illumicrate Library Stamp inspired by Wayward Children series by Shannon McGuire. It's clear. I'm missing something. I know I said it was clear, but I figured that it would be a pattern. How do stamps work? Ah, I'm missing half of it. Whoa. Reveal your secrets. With artwork inspired by the Wayward Children series, this adorable stamp is ideal for marking your book collection. So confused. I'm not supposed to unstick this to this, or am I? I am? I did it right. I think I did it right. You can't really tell here because it's completely clear. This is the design on the book stamp. And what I love the most is that it's customizable and you can write your name because it's your library. To tell you the truth, this one took me a while to figure out, but now that I know, I'm just dying to stamp this on somewhere. I just wish I had ink. Okay, it looks like this is next and it's giving strawberry shortcake. It's an apron. Is it cute? I can see right through it, so yes it is. <gasps> it's adorable. Wait, I'm confused. I thought this was all fun and games, but what about this dead unicorn? Or I guess just a normal dead horse. Oh, what is the vibe of this book? Cinnamon and gingerbread apron. A useful kitchen item, this apron featuring many elements from a wizard's guide to defensive baking is perfect for all your baking needs. I, I don't know what to say. There's a book somewhere out there that somehow is tied to this. I must read it. But I love getting practical things. So thank you, Lumicreek. This is very practical. We'll be using in the future. Kind of wish it had like a, a big pocket in front, but onto item number four, the last item before the book. And that is this thing that I've been trying not to get a glimpse of, but this is already my favorite thing. And I have absolutely no clue what this is. The best stories are found between the pages. <laughs> Very true. Oh, of a passport. I got ahead of myself. <laughs> but this is a notebook. Yay. Don't try to tell me this isn't the perfect notebook to take notes in in Dungeons and Dragons. I'm going to draft my stats here and I'm going to write down every single thing that happens so that when we manage to get all of us together and play for a session like a month after our last session, I'm going to remember everything because it'll be written down here. <laughs> Thank you, Lumicrate. This I was looking for a notebook for exactly this, and this is perfect. Oh, so it's like glossy paper, not like papery paper. So apparently this is a sticker book. Store all your stickers in one place with a stunning fandom neutral reusable sticker book. While that is a great idea, I am going to find a marker that can write in this, and I'm going to use this as a notebook. And you can't stop me. And I was wrong, this also wasn't the last item. We have one more before the book. Couldn't see it because it was hidden there. Ha! Clearly bookmarks. Featuring many of your favorite characters from Crescent City. Oh, my sisters read those. So confused because there's like a naked lady on here. She looks like she might be the sun. It might be time for me to borrow the book from her and actually read it myself. Bookmarks are always welcome in this house. So we're finally here at our last item, the book. 
it's all making sense now this is a murder mystery in a boat this might be my favorite edition that i've gotten so far not to talk about DD all the time but my dungeons and dragons character right now is an ex-pirate this really fits her aesthetic this is called a voyage of the damned by francis white look look this they look like waves and it has a boat there but it's actually the tail of this dead fish we can get murdered tomorrow tonight we party that is literally my party's mentality in dungeons and dragons it also has sprayed edges <gasps> illustration of the boat, I'm guessing the one that shows up in the book, and here it has an itemized list of the different rooms you can find in the boat. And you can find the same thing here at the back. <gasps> Illumicrate never disappoints with a naked hardcover. <sighs> it's holographic. It has little stars and it has a sign of the fish. Whoa, wait, what? Ah! And I have another signed edition. 12 magical blessings, 12 days at sea. One chance to stop a killer and save the world. For a thousand years, Concordia has maintained peace between its provinces. To mark this incredible feat, the Empress ship embarks upon a 12-day voyage to the sacred goddess's mountain. Aboard are the heirs of the 12 provinces of Concordia, each graced with a unique and secret magical ability known as a blessing. Except one, Gani means Pissero, class clown slacker and all-around disappointment. Relatable. When a beloved heir is murdered, everyone is a suspect. Oh, this is right, a murder mystery like Agatha Christie. Stuck at sea and surrounded by powerful people without a blessing to protect him, odds of survival are slim. But as the bodies pile higher, Ganymedes must become the hero he was not born to be. Can he unmask the killer and their blessing before this bloody crusade reaches the shore or Concordia, or will the empire as he knows it falls? I was gonna say I haven't read a murder mystery in a while, but the thing is, I don't think I've ever read a murder mystery and at sea and with magical powers. This one's going straight into my TBR. So these are all the things, where are the bookmarks? These are all the things that we got in our January book box. I think these two are my favorite. I'm, I might put this on my ebook and this I am turning you into a D&D journal. So don't resist. I also really like this idea. I think it has a lot of potential. I just wish they had included a little bit of ink so I could test it out right now. Obviously this very practical and this more practical still and just very intriguing overall. Thank you Lumen Great for sending me this box. I loved it so much and I cannot wait to open up the next box, the box for February and check out what other great goodies it has in store for us. So please leave a like if you like this video. Comment down below. Have you read the books in this order? Are you going to read all of them or are you just going to read the main five? It's a lot because I only had like 13 books when I went into the series. You have like 30. It is worth it. Subscribe if you haven't already, click that bell button to get notifications every time I post a new video. I post videos just like this every single Friday. And I guess I'll see you guys next time, hopefully with a shorter, easier to follow video. Bye!